and also in this section is the two-time former champions, three-time finalists Mohamed Hassan and Hendra Sediwan. We can see that the uh, top of this bottom half is an all-Japanese affair in the quarter-final tomorrow. The former world champions Hoki and Kobayashi and Koga and Saito. My goodness, Koga and Saito have been playing exceptionally well. They beat the number five seeds, Ranki Reddy and Shetty, in the very first round. Men's doubles, Ramuda, Kusuma, and so to the Indonesians leading out uh, the pairs, Kusuma Wadana and Rambetan, and here the Malaysians, Ong Yu Sin and Ti Yi. Malaysian fan. Do you know he was at the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham last year? He was at the Malaysian Open. He's everywhere. He loves his badminton. Lovely to see him here too. Well, each week Tio Yi seems to have a different Hello. hair colour. Hello. So this, I can tell you, will be just a third meeting between Hello. these two pairs. Hello. And it's uh, one win apiece. But the last time they Let's met was Black in the second round of the Badminton Black Asia Championships last year in Manila. Three games, the Indonesians won on that occasion. But since then, the Indonesians, and specifically Rambatan, has had a very serious knee injury to his left knee. So this will be the first meeting since that knee injury. So, as far as the Indonesians are concerned, this young man, Ramudia Kusuma Wadana, is 22 years of age from Sukabumi in West Java, and that equates to about five foot eight. Obviously, with the injury problems to Rambutan, their ranking dropped considerably, but they did go up three places this week. Two days ago, went up to 26 in the world, but they have been as high as 11. This is their first ever Singapore Open. And as far as uh, Yuramira Eric Yucha Yakuba Rambutan is concerned, he is a year older at the age of 23. From Depot, in West Java, in the Jakarta metropolitan area. A little taller, as you can see, 175, that's five foot nine. And good to see him back on court. They had the most extraordinary win yesterday against Kim Astrup and Rasmussen. They were again, and two, 11 down. And they managed to win it. It was absolutely extraordinary. One minute shy of the hour mark. And remember, of course, that Astrup and Rasmussen were World Championship bronze medalists in Welver in 2021. So they had a, a big result for them. On you, Sin is 28 years of age from the ancient city of Malacca. He and his partner are enjoying their fifth week in total at their career high of seven. For them, it's a fourth appearance here at the Singapore Open. And they were bronze medalists at the World Championships in Welva. Lost out to Hoki and Kobayashi in the semi-final. Tui Yi is 30 Ready years of age from Mua in Johor. Yeah. Also silver medalists at this year's Asian Championships in Dubai. And as far as they were concerned, well, their first round, they be beat the Popoff brothers at Cristo and Tola Junior in two straight games, 31 minutes only for that victory. So our court officials for this one, Agunis Lusviras from Latvia and Shum Sai Kit of Hong Kong, China is in the service judges chair. Well, Seen, uh, I hope you'll agree with me that we'll just refer to the two Indonesians as Kusuma Wadana and Orambatan rather than giving them their full names from now on. <laughs> yeah. 
Unless, of course, you want to give the full names. Jakob Jeremiah. You've got some it in the. More. You've got it in the wrong Josh order Lane already. Yoshi. <laughs> on my right. Yoshi, Jakob, Jeremiah, Rambitan, and I missed one there as well. I think. Yeah, you did. And you still got it in the wrong order. And on my left, Jeremiah, Rambitan, and from India, Kusum Mavadana, Indonesia. Theo, you serve to Pramadia, Kusubaradana, Lavo, Huey. So it is the number eight seeds from Malaysia. Ong Sin and Theo Yi in the red shirts nearest to us, getting the second round match underway. Fourth Singapore One Open for them, block. and their previous three. They've had a couple of last 16 matches, which is where we are at now in the tournament so this is their third time in the second round but they've never progressed past a second round in Singapore. Two, love. Good intersection from Kasuma Wadana. I think it's very interesting to see how we react um, Kasuma Wadana and Rambitan to the win yesterday, the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde match they had against the uh, Astrogon Rasmus. And sometimes when you experience those situations, you feel like you're almost out of the tournament and then you just sort of play free of all expectations and, and um, get things going. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's another good interception from Kasumi Wadana. Well, the Malaysians pulled out of the Thailand Open last week. And they've lost in the quarter-final of the Malaysian Masters the week prior to that. Uh, Kang and Seo, who went on to take the title. Was there a slight injury problem, or were they just fatigued? I'm, I'm not sure, actually. Six, five. Um, as we uh, touched upon earlier on, I think it's probably a good idea for many of these players just to take a week off. I recall some years ago it was um, a hassle even to play three tournaments in a row. Now there's players that are entered into four tournaments coming off the uh, pseudo campaign as well. So that certainly has changed the uh, perception of how many tournaments you can play yeah. consecutively. Seven, six.
Oh. <laughs> well, it was an outrageous attempt, wasn't it? He played the backhand cross court net shot, then trying to play the forehand cross court. If that had worked, we would have had that of a, of a play of the day, I'm sure. rally is we've had so far <laughs> six shots perhaps not a lot Ten, that was nine. a candidate That's a beauty. What a super shot from Henry Sin. Just guiding that cross court into the open space. So it is the Malaysians who have the one point advantage at the mid game interval here in the opening game. Just about seven minutes played, that's all. One of the pairs that has had the most success out of going independent, in my opinion, they are, they've become a better pair. Yeah, there he is on the left. Boy. Boy. Yes, just to emphasize your point, I think, Steen, the first uh, tournament they played after becoming independent, which was the Thailand Masters 300 in 2020. They won. Yeah. And it was their first title for over three years. Oh, my goodness. That's incredible. Oh. Well, covering for his partner. Actually, all you sin could have played that one. It was up in time. Thank you. Oh, quite clearly, 
the best and the longest rally of the match so far. to get it past two year when he first gets in on the net. Amazing uh, front court player. Oh, well, that's not too shabby either, uh, is it? Uh, when you sin. Excellent play. Oh, that's right into the corner. That is great control. I like that. I mean, the high cross lift to get extra court to work with. And you lift and you play it so high, so it's impossible to intercept and put um, pressure on your partner before he gets back in uh, defense position. Oh. And the point comes to an end at five, but that has put a different complexion on this open game. standing at the net. Uh, they playing at full risk, more or less both pairs. opportunities. Only needed the one. 
21-17, the opening game in favour of the number eight seeds from Malaysia. On you, Sin and Tiu Yi. Yeah, gets the thumbs up from his partner. And so he should. Good play by On Yu Sin. So the opening game, 21 17 in 16 minutes. <laughs> So On Yu Sing and Tio Yi Yi of Malaysia finished very strongly that opening game. And now it's a real problem for Kusuma Wadana and the Rambitan. They're playing with the drift. They're going to struggle with any of their defensive shots. Lifting long. Got a player. Oh, oh. between legs. Racket skills from Tui Yi. Wasn't it that on this near side yesterday that um, they suddenly uh, got something going against Astrup and uh, Rasmussen? I think it was. It was. It was. Following, the, um, following the interval, of course. Strong, the Malaysians. Yeah. Good flick serve. Lovely. Men's doubles, Steen. We've seen more upsets in the men's doubles over the first. Uh, round than I think any other discipline. We lost three seeds in the first round of the men's doubles, didn't we? Uh, the uh, current world number one, Salfian yeah. and Ardi Anto, uh, a former uh, finalist, Liu Yu Chen, uh, with his partner, Wu Shuani, who was also a former finalist with different partner, and Randy Reddy and Shetty. Yeah, it is big, big uh, surprises, all three, Six. Yeah, in my opinion. Um, Alfian and Adianto clearly struggling at the moment. Um, saw some comments in the Indonesian uh, newspapers. They were they were aware of it. They were going to practice harder up until Indonesia Open, and um, I don't know if that's time enough. So for call here. Yeah. But also uh, Liu Chen and uh, Ushani losing to. Um, 
old timers know, know if that's too much calling Kim Sarang and uh, Kim Ki Jung old timers, but it's been a while Thank since you. we've heard from them yeah. last time. Yeah, that to me was a big shock. But then Lu Chen, Lu Xuani, uh, they haven't had a very good time One. of late, have they? They no. lost first round last week. And I think. I think there's a lot of the Chinese players that have been very focused on uh, winning the Sudirman Cup on home One. soil, where they were put under more pressure than they probably had expected. Yeah. Um, of course, the Three, full six. team is so strong that even though they lose some entities, they are still represented in the uh, later stages of the tournament. That's what we expect. Oh. But, um, Four, oh, it was quick six. from Akasuma Wadana. You could, say that, you could say that China in men's doubles, for instance, are a little Let's bit at the play. same point as Indonesia. You, I, I don't think you can, if you're the coaches of these two nations, I don't think you can go into the Olympic qualification period with confidence and say, hey, we have a strong, Whoa. strong contender. It looked like Alfian and Arianto were going to take that spot for Indonesia, but um, there's some some big um, setbacks once in a while. Oh, oh right. Sands over. Five, seven. He's playing extremely well, Tiri Yi. Uh, so is on you sing but to he of course the um, preferred net player for the Malaysians and um, it's super important to uh, be able to dominate in the front court area those shots there that little extra punch he's giving it uh to i really love it backhand very similar to what we've seen jung Siwei be able to do and first hand jang nan the now retired olympic champion in both mixed doubles and men's doubles oh, he, he could get out of the way seven nine I think the Malaysians need to be a little bit careful I here, think so Steve, too. This because is they raced to that six-love lead at the beginning of this second game, and I think they've become a little bit complacent. They're trying trick shots. But they should have seen the match from yesterday. They yeah. should have learned the lesson. But this is a super important phase Seven, here because the Indonesians are, are starting to, to claw back again and uh, taking advantage when uh, they are sort of um, given but have an easy time earning the attack lead. That's a big mistake from Kusumawadana. Ten, seven. I mean, you could say the Indonesians are in much better shape now than they were yesterday mm. at this point. Yeah. because that's a bit of a gift to the Malaysians. And Ong and Tio have a four-point advantage here in the second, having already won the first. Yeah, look at his body language afterwards as well. It's not good news if you're... A Indonesian fan. Court one, 20 seconds. Court one, 20 seconds. On court, players. Players on court. 
So play resumes. Oh, oh, and immediately another error for the Indonesians. Cannot afford that. into it, uh, Ong and Tiu, and um, they sometimes tend to go towards that more playful uh, playing style, especially Tiu Yi, where they like to stand in the defense and um, yeah, play around. I guess it's a good expression. I don't think they can do that against these two. No. They're still missing that uh, sort of big result that states that they're back in the form they had when um, Rambutan injured his knee. Yeah, uh, they've, won, they've, they've won one title since, and yeah. that was the Southeast Asian Games, yeah. but that's not a, a, the level of a World Tour event. So I agree with you, Steen. I think they need a, a big title to really announce that they are back oh! fully back to their Seven. previous form. Nine, seven. So best Indonesian bets at the moment is basically daddies and the babies. Luke, Rolly oh! and Dan Mati. The defending champions here. Yeah. And also um, revived all England. Former all England champions. Nolana and uh, Fikri. Fikri. Molana lost to World Champions. Oh. I think this is far from over yet, you know. Yeah, I agree. And yet it should have been. Long. Yeah. Beautiful Seven service return. Over. That little 15, hook with the racket 11. there, giving it a little bit extra pace. Thank you. saying, was it not a double hit? Did it not come off the back of Tiu Yi? I have to say, I thought there was something odd about the shot. It was early on in the rally, long before this. No, I didn't notice it. Oh, big miss. 
That is a huge miss by Kasuma Wadana. to dig themselves out of trouble there, well, the Indonesians, but somehow they did it. having a good time our Malaysian friend I can at least hear him in the yes. spectator stand <laughs> so the Malaysians just three points away from their first quarter final here at the Singapore Open oh my goodness what on earth what on earth happened there his racket was nowhere near it on you since because I mean to you obviously uh, has some spectacular finishes but um, on you sin has just been rock solid and put a lot of pressure on his opponents and we never see him make or very rarely see him make mistakes like this Pressure changes. Yeah. Oh. Well, it's not going to happen because it is already five match point opportunities. The number eight seeds in your sending to you. They have a chance. They do. This two has gone totally off the ball. The thing is that he can pop up again all of a sudden. Match point number four. Oh, oh that's, challenge. Right. That, that's way wide. That, in my opinion, was well wide. And I think it's match over on their fourth match point. Here we go. Indeed, well right. 
21-17, 21-18, the margin of the victory for the number eight seeds from Malaysia. On Yu Sin and Tiu Yi. Just a little over 36 minutes. Malaysian fans celebrate. 21-18. Umpire just confirming that score line. 21-17, 21-18. So the silver medalists from this year's Asian Championships beat the gold medalists from last year's Asian Championships in two straight games. And there's confirmation of that scoreline. So just about 36 minutes for the entirety of the match. And Ong and Teal safely through to the quarter final. So one more match to come today, and it's been singles, and it features the former world champion and home star, Mo Kin Yu. That's what's happened so far today here on court number one at the Singapore Open uh, Super 750 event on the HSBC BW World Tour. Nine matches completed, one more to come, and it's men's singles, and it's the young French player, the left-hander, Christophe Popov, up against the former world champion and home favourite, Lokin Yu, the number four seed from Singapore. Well, as far as this match is concerned, it's from the bottom half of the draw. And the winner from last week,